All right, welcome back to day two of three of our unit of Earth history. Today's topic is relative dating. Okay, relative just kind of relative means it just puts things in relative order, not a certain, doesn't give an exact age. Okay, so today we're going to learn how scientists use relative dating techniques to put geologic events in order. Okay, we're going to learn how to apply the laws of geology, the law of horizontality, the law of superposition, the law of cross-cutting relationships to relative dating. Okay, so on that note, go ahead and pause this if you need more time to write this down. I'm going to move on. Okay, so quick write. How do you think scientists know which fossils are older and which fossils are younger? Okay, imagine you, had a, you have a full trash can. Where would you find the old trash? Where would you find the new trash? Okay, in a relative way. Okay. All right, go ahead and do your quick write for five points. I'm going to move on. All right. In our last notes, we learned the history of the Earth. Okay, when reptiles first appeared, when dinosaurs went extinct, when mammals dominated Earth. So how do we know the order of all these events? How do we know what came first, what came second, okay, and third, and what and so forth? Well, one way scientists have figured out Earth's history is by relative dating, okay? by putting geologic events in order. All right, so relative dating is the concept of dating rocks by putting geologic events in order. It does not give an exact age of rocks. It just puts events in order. So for example, this rock layer formed first, this rock layer formed second, and this rock layer formed third, and then magma came in, let's say, and that was the fourth event. Okay, and then cooled to make rock, and then a fault came through and maybe broke that rock. Okay, and that would be the fifth event. Okay, all right, and then let's say a river came through and eroded this, moved the rock, a flood came through and washed that away. Well, okay, that would be the sixth event. Seventh, a new layer forms, and eighth, a new layer forms. Okay. So what is relative dating? Okay, so question on the left hand side, answer on the right hand side, please. Use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. I'm going to move on here. Okay, so go ahead and please pause this while you write. Okay, the law of superposition. Okay, it's not that fancy. In layers of deposited sedimentary rock, sandstone, siltstone, the oldest rock layers are at the bottom, and the and the rock layers become younger toward the top. That's a pretty simple concept, right? Old 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 rock layers at the bottom, younger rock layers at the top. So therefore, older fossils would be at the bottom of, and the younger fossils would be closer to the top, right? So the law of superposition is right. Young fossil, older going to younger here. Okay, so the youngest rock layer would be this one, the oldest would be one. So we're going from old to young. It's that simple. The law of superposition that states oldest rock layers at the bottom and become younger as we go closer to the top. Okay, it's kind of like this. If we look at these layers of sed sedimentary rock here, in the bottom of a lake, it's the oldest going to youngest, right? So the principle of superposition states that the oldest rock layers are at the bottom and the rock layers become younger toward the top. Okay, so old rocks at the bottom, younger rocks, the youngest rock at the very top, right? And the oldest rocks here at the bottom. So for your notes, what is the law of superposition? Question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right-hand side. Please use the answer break to determine which words best complete the sentence. Okay, I'm going to move on here. Go ahead and pause this now. All right, the law of horizontality. The law of horizontality says that rocks form into place forming flat horizontal layers, okay? So there's a horizontal layer. There's a horizontal layer. There's, so in other words, all rocks must have formed flat and then become tilted after they formed flat, okay? So sediments are originally deposited in flat horizontal layers. 
okay? That's what the law of horizontality states, that sediments are originally deposited in flat horizontal layers. If the rocks are folded, which means they're curved or something, or are laying at a steep angle, they must have been disturbed or tilted after they were originally deposited. So, these rock form second, this rock layer formed third, and the so they must have formed flat first. And then, let's say an earthquake happened, okay, came through and tilted them. Okay, so all the law of horizontality states is that rocks, these rocks were flat before they became tilted. Okay, so what is the law of horizontality? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on here. <clears throat> All right, unconformities. Now, this concept is a little bit more difficult than the others. So, listen, think of layers of rock as pages of a history book, okay? If we remove the pages, the book is incomplete. Well, an unconformity is a similar concept. Think of these rock layers as pages of Earth's history. Well, if we remove a layer, there's a page of Earth's history missing. So an unconformity is when layers of rock are missing. In this case, which, can you determine which layer of rock is missing? This squiggly line indicates that something is missing here. Okay, So that squiggly line tells you that rock layer number two is absent. So here's how it works. Rock layers are deposited in flat horizontal layers first. Okay. Now, let's say a flood comes through, or a river, or anything, a glacier, whatever, okay? It removes that layer. That is an unconformity, event three here. Weathering and erosion create a gap in geologic time. And then new rock layers are deposited, okay? So, notice one, two, three, layer three here is missing. And then we go four, five, okay? So, an unconformity is a gap in rock layers due to erosion and weathering or a break in the deposition of sediments, missing rock layers. So, for your notes, write this down, please. What is an unconformity? Okay, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence, please. Go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on. Okay, so the law of cross-cutting relationships. The last one we're going to talk about today, I believe, is the law that states that a fault line or an igneous intrusion, okay, must be younger than the rock it cuts, okay? So, if we have layers of sedimentary rock, okay, now this magma intrusion, as magma squeezed through these rocks, penetrated, okay, it must be younger because it's cutting through these, okay? So, this is the younger of the events. Then let's say a fault comes through and cuts it. It cuts the magma intrusion and it cuts the rock layers. So it must be the youngest. Correct. Okay. So what is the law of cross-cutting relationships? A fault line or an igneous intrusion must be blank than the rock it cuts across. Use the answer bank to determine which word is missing here, please. Go ahead and pause this while you write this down for your notes. It's the last one. We're going to do a little practice here, and then you're on your own, okay? So go ahead and write this down. Please pause it. I'm going to move on. Okay, so practice. What I want you to do, starting with the oldest rock and work your way to the youngest, write young, number one to eight versus old. Go ahead and pause this and tell me what is the oldest? Is it A? Is it D? Is it B? Start with the oldest and work your way to the youngest. Okay? Number one to eight, and please fill in the letters here. Okay? Pause this, please. I'm going to reveal the answers, so go ahead and pause this while you work on this, because this is just like a diagram you're going to have probably on the test here. So go ahead and put some thought into this and pause it. Okay? I'm going to reveal the answers now. Okay, so let's go back in time here. We got A, B, C, okay. And the law of cross-cutting relationships says this must be younger. Okay, so we got D. Then we got the fault cuts through everything, so it must be the youngest. So E, right? Faults are 
breaking rock that move along flat surfaces, remember. Okay. Then, uh-oh, erosion, F. And then we have G. And then we have H. Good job. Now let's do one more. Pause this. Notice there's one through one more thing here that's cutting through everything. The law of cross-cutting relationship. Go ahead and pause this. We're starting from the old. Work your way to the youngest. Okay, go ahead and complete this now. I'm going to reveal the answers here. Okay, so let's go back in time here. Layer A formed. Layer B. Layer C. Okay, magma cuts through. It's D. Then the fault cuts through everything. Okay, E. Okay. Then once again, weathering and erosion. Layers are removed. Who knows? We don't know. We just know a layer is missing. That's F, an unconformity. Then we have G, a new layer forms, is deposited. Then we have H, a new layer. Okay. Then another magma intrusion cuts through everything. Okay. And we have K here. So it's the youngest. Okay. All right. So go ahead and summarize, please. Okay, use, look back at your notes to determine which words best complete here, these missing blanks. So you look back at your notes, and imagine you had to tell a friend the age of the different rock layers. What would you say? Okay, use the laws to kind of explain that to your friend. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. Okay, to complete your summary for 20 points, and we'll see you next time for day three of three. All right, bye-bye.